Hello again. Welcome to our first panel of the day, which is environmental and social challenges for the development of renewable energies in La Guajira region. I'd like to introduce our panel. Very happy to have you here today. Very high level panel. Beginning with Rodrigo Suarez, Director de la Autoridad Nacional del Licenciamiento Ambiental, followed by Felipe Vilencia, el Director de la Dirección de la Autoridad Nacional de Consulta Previa. We have Samuel Santander, Director General de Corpo Guajira. We have Michel Sabillon, Project Manager for UL. Uh, Juan Jacobo Rodriguez, Director de Planeación Transmisión, Grupo Energía Bogotá. And last but not least, our moderator, Diego Patron, Gerente General for AES Colombia. Over to you, Diego. Gracias, Emerson. Good morning, my name is Diego Patron. Of the General Senate Director, Felipe Dinencia, Director of the National Authority of Previous Consultation. And we have Fernando Saltander, with General Director of Corpo Guajira and Vigel Savillon. Rodrigo Suárez, who will make a first presentation. Somos autoridad. Somos la Autoridad Nacional de Licencias Ambientales del Sector Administrativo de Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible. Nos encargamos del estudio, evaluación, del control y seguimiento de licencias, permisos y trámites ambientales que contribuyen a mejorar la eficacia, eficiencia y efectividad de la gestión ambiental y el desarrollo sostenible. Recuerda que somos autoridad. Porque contamos con autonomía administrativa y financiera para ejercer nuestras funciones. Somos titulares de la potestad sancionatoria ambiental para investigar las presuntas infracciones ambientales que ocurran respecto de los proyectos, obras o actividades de nuestra competencia. ¿Te has preguntado por qué la ANLA es una autoridad? Porque evaluamos y decidimos sobre las solicitudes de licencias ambientales para definir la viabilidad ambiental de proyectos, obras o actividades de nuestra competencia. Porque diseñamos, desarrollamos e implementamos diferentes instrumentos para optimizar los procesos de licenciamiento ambiental, permisos y trámites ambientales. Somos autoridad porque... Hacemos control y seguimiento ambiental a los proyectos, obras y actividades que cuentan con instrumento ambiental de nuestra competencia. Porque ordenamos y presidimos audiencias públicas ambientales y promocionamos todos los mecanismos de participación ciudadana en los asuntos de nuestra competencia. Por eso somos la Autoridad Nacional de Licencias Ambientales, ANLA. We are an authority. We are the national authority for environmental licenses of the environmental and sustainable development. We are an authority. We are the national authority for environmental licensing for the administrative sector for uh, sustainable development. We are in charge of the study, evaluation, monitoring, and evaluation of the different uh, environmental procedures that will get us to be more effective, uh, effectiveness and efficiency for this sustainable development. We are, need to remember that we are an authority because we have an. Uh, um, administrative autonomy. We're also the head of this uh, area for uh, researching about the different programs and activities that we they carry out. Have you asked or have you wondered why this is an authority? Because we assess and we decide in terms of the different requests for the environmental licenses of the feasibility and the different projects and activities in our competencies because we have a follow-up of the different procedures and paperwork for all these environmental projects, so for get all the different inputs and consumables and the licensing. So also we uh, design and we implement constantly all the different uh, activities and we could get a lot of transparency and the different uh, opportunity for the development of the different activities. We are an authority because we also have a follow-up of the different uh, projects and because we are going to promote all the different participations. 
That's why we are national authority and law for environmental licensing. So we would like to thank to Ser Colombia for inviting us to this Wind Power Colombia Congress for the ANLL is quite important to make a space for this. We have our roles on the different areas that we have developed along these years or throughout these years. In that sense, I would like to show you the agenda of our presentation. And first of all, we would like to show you what are the actions we have taken in order to move forward uh, with this COVID issue. So for all these non-conventional sources of renewables, we would like to tell you some of the details about the exercises that we have carried out for these renewable sources here in the Guajira area, as well as some of the topics related for uh, the answers to all these activities. In that sense, the first thing that we'd like to mention is in terms of the environmental licensing for the different projects. We believe that the entity has made a lot of efforts, not only from the administrative perspective, but also that we can keep carrying out our uh, activities in the different uh, offices across the country. We've made uh, evaluations, we have planned some specific information, we've made some analysis at the regional level, we have also set some mechanisms for assisted uh, visits, for we also we have made some space for early uh, counseling for the different projects on the digital platform, such as the one that we are using today. Through this follow-up or monitoring, we are also having a check in the mecha technological mechanisms and trying to uh, monitoring the groups on site and virtually. We also have some professionals on the territories and we have provided all the different areas through these um, virtual mechanisms or not on-site mechanisms, and we can have the chat box or any other tools that we could have the proper monitoring. In terms of environmental licensing, we have managed to, to develop different strategies, all these virtual visits. We have gotten different uh, meetings with the cooperative and uh, the local uh, government so we can have an evaluation. We have also gotten some different meetings with governors and the community leaders in different municipalities such as Mostecita, Los Remedios, among others. And from the socio-economical perspective, we have managed to gotten different meetings uh, with traditional authorities. I, we believe that this is quite a, important because we have gotten some interpreting services from the authorities so that we got through the process. We have developed those meetings that had helped us in the whole process framework. Likewise, we have uh, carried out different meetings with all these uh, plotlands uh, owners and likewise, in terms of visits, as we have mentioned. We have carried out visits, not in presence, in order to have a different kind of pictures, technical equipments can keep on carrying out evaluations and comply with the requirements of environmental licensing and evaluation of all those licenses. And we have been able to keep on working. Under this visit that we have carried out, we overflew the polygons and then we have flying plans that will enable us to have 
pictures and define the areas of high interest where resources can be exploited. Uh, the, all those land zoning in identifying the different impacts and that we can decide the development through those flights, uh, what we need uh, to decide. Uh, well, obviously we have been correct linking different import things and confirming what we see uh, on the flights uh, on the field. Sometimes we have to accompany the visits to see the diameters. And uh, times of coverage, well, we have been using those pictures with uh, color schemes to see if it's primary vegetation or if there's uh, any concern on how to use those tree areas and see what are renewables at the Guajira. Those are visits that we recently carried out. And on the compliments uh, to in-presence visits, we have been obviously complying security um, that has been ordered by the Ministry of Health. We have carried out those in-presence visits with the different authorities at a regional, municipal levels, among others, where we have been able to define the steps that are set forth on the reference terms. We have also visited the communities, keeping in mind all the security protocols, normally those that are located in essential areas where the projects will take place. Added to what we just mentioned about evaluation and monitoring, we have changed charge charges or administrative of monitoring up to 31st of October. We have suspended the payments of those bills for two months' time, but the monitoring will be like a guided visit, and obviously those are the charges that we normally collect uh, uh, as authority. And then we will have the spatial and on-field areas and we will have savings of 10% for the companies or on behalf of the licensing department. On a spatial, the geospatial compliance of the reports that the heads of the environmental licensing are requesting. So the second item that we wanted to mention is the service providers. We have identified a new way to continue working. We also want to state about important elements on the projects. For environmental licensing, it is quite important to use the existing data. We are aware that UMLE has done a very important job to have indicators in place. However, national authorities have developed environmental indicators. We have the information in a timely and necessary manner and undoubtedly this is linked to the process that Corpo Guajira has been heading, that it is a regional authority for environmental issues. All data from the projects existing in the region is now available and we have developed for that purpose the regional reports information regarding environmental impacts that could be accrual 
and continuous and presence semi -pres in present for citizenry involvement activities so there will be more knowledge on the region on the environment and the link between ANLA and the communities that is a very important step that we will always take. On the other side, we consider that these projects help to the development outlook. We need to know environmental determinants existing for this area, so we are moving forward according to the needs of the communities and their integration in this environmental impact report. So we are transforming in a positive way the conflicts that may exist in the region. So from that logic of how to act in the territory and based upon the documents of UNLE, where we take into account from the physical viewpoint and social viewpoint that include information on protected nat natural protected areas, the location of uh, local importance and sensitive issues, and from the socioeconomical knowledge, what is the space of the where we can have farming reserves. We need to identify what are on a, the early warnings to consider. So we have been moving forward propositively for the Department of the Guajira. Normally, environmental sensitive areas. Those are part of what is considered of the development only. And we have first carried out an analysis on everything that is um, at a shallow level, and then we have classified them according to the degree of vulnerability with a rating from one to five five being the most vulnerable one. From that, out of that, we make a secondary data according to the extent of the projects in the region and the sectors involved. Okay. And that has enabled us to be having the art articulation with socioeconomic data to have a sensitivity process, an environmental one, that is, is a very useful tool because at the end what we are getting is information where the project should be developed and particularly to the transmission lines that should be constructed. The lines that will be putting the connector with other small lines that are linked to the main connect. This is a road to start thinking of service corridors. That's something that the country is thinking about. We did not have the information in the past. However, we have the data now. And for the Guajira department, we have thought of inviting this proposal to be really positive and foresee the impact on our territory, the network that can be developed, and a very important progress on the number of projects that could be developed. Uh, it is important, or concern, is the behavior of environmental licensing. What we want to show is the opportunity that we have as an authority on environmental issues. Throughout the time, we have been reducing time. And we have highlighted and improved the decision quality 
process. We are complying with the law and that is very important for project developers because they can do their planning, complying with the norm as we are so doing right now. Thank you for your participation and I hope that shortly I can answer to the questions that you might have on the presentation that I just made. I want to thank the authorities of Colombia for enabling me to do this presentation. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. Quite interesting, all the topics that you have presented to us in this pandemic time. It is important to have the flexibility. The, this Department of Licensing is obtaining, gathering uh, so much data. I want to tell you what is going to be uh, the challenges at the Guajira and how they will be favoring the mechanisms of evaluation according to the process they are developing. Hi, good morning to all my panel members. I want to thank the invitation to Ser Colombia for having invited me to this such important event and share with you what we are doing with our Colectora project at the Guajira. You, as you were stating, yes, challenges have been many from all perspectives because of the nature of the project is key for energy transition of our country that will enable to connect 1,500 mg of non-conventional energy in our country that is being developed throughout territories where in the past we didn't have the possibility of developing that type of infrastructure nor having an arrival to the territory where in the past we had no participation or development of infrastructure whatsoever. At present, we have been working. I have my pet here. <laughs> the dog is barking. Uh, you know, working at home, it's another reality. Uh, the work with uh, government entities has been key. Uh, we know that if we don't uh, strengthen those relationships, we cannot provide certainty for investors. Here, the directionship that heads Mr. Felipe needs to have that accompany to the investor. The change has been fundamental and that has enabled us in a short term have very important progress to what we had planned before the arrival of those resources and the previous consultation, maybe the largest one that has been carried out in our country, have that approach to these communities, be able to be moving forward, creating workshops. And I think that, has, that is as key. I want to thank the efforts of the authorities that have been accompanying us as much as they could and uh, that we think should be, we should continue to strengthen to have infrastructure, infrastructure that will enable the country to have renewable energies available and make that transition on the system, the decarbonization that we so much want to have. If there's a mission to convey here is that energy transition is like very sexy. We also associate it to uh, wind farms and solar farms. But I think it's worthwhile mentioning that it will be carried out throughout this type of project with the grids that will enable us to have the flexibility in, to, in order to incorporate um, those that mix of energy to the grid and bring the benefits to the citizens of Colombia. The authorities have been able, in spite of this new reality, that to have the right spaces to open the discussion because in each of the roles they have enabled us to have flexible mechanisms to continue their development, respecting communities' rights, and everything that is required to develop it as best as possible. 
Thank you so much to that regard. I think that is essential to hear, Dr. Felipe, how this new rivality been affecting that previous consultation. The first difficulty, well, it was do things online versus in present. And how have you been dealing with that? How can the national authorities of previous consultation during the pandemic keep on doing those previous consultations? Thank you so much, Diego. Uh, greetings to all our panel members, and I want to thank Sir for the invitation. Yes, it is a very important topic. As we all know, the difficulty of the pandemia, unfortunately, since March, there was a paralysis, so to speak. When that happened from the ministry, from the government, what we tried to do was to call all communities and all the project developers to consider different alternatives to hold those previous consultations. So we issued a document. It was issued by Alicia Arango um, to carry them online but that it was misinterpreted because they thought that they will be changing the fact of having things in present with this key. So at that moment in time, because of different reasons, we had to withdraw it. So we started to do an exercise very carefully with the prosecutor's office, with the... Um, advocacy, uh, so we started to say that all communities are different, the regions of the countries were different, and all projects are different. So the strategy was go uh, in a case-by-case -case scenario. And some uh, virtual consultations did take place, but there are others that cannot because of the region in the country that where they are located, where we don't have technology available. To that regard, the prosecutor office has uh, helped us to talk to the executives and define the best strategy for that project, for that community, understanding that it might not take place in presence, that it could be semi-in-presence or 100% in-presence according to the biosecurity protocols in place. So the national government ha issued the decree to enable to hold those in-presence consultations pro protecting at the same time the communities. Uh, so on October 31, we started that strategy. We have carried out over 1,100 consultation of 874 projects, 40 of the percent of them in the Guajira area and around 45% related to the energy sector. The truth of the matter is a pandemic has proven to us, and we have discussed lengthy with the communities and the developers to have other alternatives to in-presence consultation. In any way, we want to change uh, online 100%, but whenever the community agrees to it, and if we give all the guarantees um, to the communities, we can use um, online instead of in presence. The, the, we have the first
what we were very happy of the members of the community that held the first 100% online previous consultation that we were able to prove the communities and to the country that it is possible if we bring together all the efforts, all the technological means. Yes, we can hold this type of meetings guaranteeing their fundamental rights uh, to those communities. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you so much. Impressive the number that you are mentioning and it is outstanding that virtuality has increased the participation of people, m people that in the past could not attend. Now they are able to participate in those previous consultations. And in the Guajira and this uh, energy transition project and how they have been prepared for these pandemics uh, period. So also would like to ask you about all these environmental projects. We know that they are very important for the reduction of the environmental impacts, as well as many other projects can meet or got into the same transmission point. So we would like to know from, from you. Thank you very much for this invitation. The Guajira, Corpo Guajira has been working in this sense from the Herpirache Park in the 2000. In the 2006, we've gotten a very strong change by the coming of big companies. So we've been involved in that topic. Then we have the first environmental licensing so Corpo Guajira has been involved for many years in, in the environmental impact assessments. Here we have 10 uh, parts with the licensing and Corpo Guajira has provided seven of those licenses. 1,309 megawatts from the Guajira department or section. and we have around 1,354 1, megawatts with another eight parts that are in the middle of this environmental assessment without taking into account everything related to the construction lines, collecting lines and everything going towards the park and from the park to uh, different areas. I'm telling all of these, uh, and the purpose of this is because all of them are linked to the La Guajira or the higher lands of Alta Guajira, which are uh, very close to the border with Venezuela. Uh, so, so we have Aguipechi and we have another uh, sector that is going. So we are divided into big sectors and where we all have all these facilities and that's why Every time that we are going through these uh, environmental impact studies and we can see the landscape perspective, here we have a very flat uh, area and with all these projects coming, the landscape impact is also quite important. Um, telling you that we have more than 2,700 megawatts and are in part of the licensing. That is why taking us 784 uh, wind turbines installation and we can have our 3.5 so we can reduce this number of wind uh, turbines. Why are we talking about this aspect? Because for us all the projects, all these wind projects we have, uh, although there are many companies, it's just one project perceived by Corpo Guajira. We have the parks, lines, the different accessing ways and the different infrastructure for that purpose. I was telling you about the landscape perspective and it has been addressed very little. And it's an important point 
of these uh, sections of the wind turbine where there is an air with no uh, electric power. This is an effect that we have called it like uh, Christmas lights because they are just turning off and, and out. And uh, this is an important point for us. Within all the different impacts that we have, we have the, the department of Guajira is an area where we have a lot of migratory birds. We have these uh, twice per year and we believe that they will be affected. We have carried out some uh, works for monitoring about flamingos and in 2017 we have uh, monitoring and follow up these flamingos for 17 months to check what are the roads, their height for flying, and to get that information into the projects to so also the um, flying mammals and knowing that the bats, for instance, they are also getting close and they could also get an impact. These are very important topics and this is something that we need to consider in the environmental impact studies. What do we need to do then? Just today in one of the panels I heard that, that 7,000 megawatts for a department and we believe that we, there were 7,500 but as long as there is no an environmental ordering or we can measure the territory and perform this accumulative impact evaluation, it will be very difficult to make uh, progress in all these projects. Why? Because I'm telling you that we almost have 800 uh, wind turbines in a specific area where they are going to be joined as a nucleus, but if we don't manage to have this accumulative impact evaluation, we won't be able to know exactly which are the areas that need to continue with the licensing or not. So this is a challenge to know if we need to carry out this evaluation and we were working on that topic specifically. Regarding other topics that are also important such as uh, service uh, corridors, why? all of this because there are some things that cannot be understood properly. It, this is just one project and if we have the best way of lines and the best number of lines, we will have an impact on the communities and on the fauna. Sometimes you can see that each of the sections would like to have their own access line. They also, they are not sharing these lines that it was a, a different situation. We need to allow that mm, different parks can take their energy from the single line. Sometimes we don't understand how different parks that are very close together as companies and each of them would like to have their own different line. So we just need to start by getting everybody or all the companies into the same line. This is quite important. We've been working in another different topic and that is to propose a single monitoring methodology for the impacts for flora and fauna for all the projects in this sector. Why? Because we would like to know and we would like to compare the measures of the different companies in their managing plans and we need to check that each of them are proposing different uh, lines. We would like that all companies, that all the corporation will work together in just a single methodology and do the monitoring to all of them. In terms of uh, consultation or asking all of these, we've been present in the 10 licensing that have been granted by giving the license or by giving some uh, consulting processes. We've seen that there are very important topics. One is that all these parks have increased the conflicts within the communities. 
there were many things that were come, but with the coming of all or with the arriving of all these companies, we can see that uh, when they are trying to characterizing this component, they are just looking more towards the municipalities or to the different uh, sections or communities, and it should be more into territories rather than lines. So all proposals should be around the life plans of the communities in order to know if they can manage to reduce the existing conflicts. Another important topic is water. This is quite a hot topic. For Corpo Guajira, we can see that the problem is how to manage all companies to have water as well as the communities where there is no water. We have proposed that there is some seawater and we just need to desalt it. And then we just need to have these facilities installed for the, for the community so we can distribute the water to all of them. This is uh, so far my input. Thank you, Fernando. It is quite important everything that you have mentioned. And in that sense, I would like to ask Michelle in terms of her experience in the financing aspect, how do you see the bank, especially with all the topics that Fernando has mentioned, and especially in these areas where there are some difficulties and, of course, there is not a, a proper paper to set that. So how to manage that aspect? Hello, good morning. It's quite a pleasure being here with you. Well, you all is a, a consultant company for banking these type of projects. In terms of uh, the environmental and social aspect, banking is also centered in conflicts, especially socially, and is uh, including the environmental factors, especially in La Guajira, these indigenous communities are very close to to the ground, the, the everything they believe. So what we are trying to do with these type of evaluations that we perform is to verify that impacts and the mitigation alternatives as well as the loads of all these projects will be aligned to the uh, other plants in the area. So we need to set a methodology, an homogeneous methodology, especially for flora and fauna and biodiversity. The water aspect is also very important because it's giving us a lot of social conflicts. And now in, in our company, we see that the social aspect is quite important. All these uh, surveys should be addressed with three points. First, respecting traditions, honest, honesty and transparency. And all these uh, surveys should be done in terms that the community should be very well aware of what they will have from that in terms of transportation, in terms of the construction side, what are the soil impacts, and we need to respect nature, their way of living, in addition to, to start working with expectations. We have some works from the beginning of the development that we weren't able to work with all these expectations and that uh, doomed the project because they start with blockings and they would have these downtime losses and we are going to increase the community development plan. So there is a, a door open to groups or individuals that are only looking for getting their own benefit economically just to to make this project that is not feasible. We have the cases in Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras. So we just need to get rid of this type of problems. So that's why this previous survey process should be done and working with the expectations of the community members. We just need to prevent that there is no social conflict so all these uh, challenges or all these projects can be set in place, starting with a PPA. Thank you very much. Definitely all the topics that had been addressed from are essential. So through all these projects can be made successfully. I think 
Did we also have another topic and that is what is the technological requirement? In this Wahira area, we have some problems uh, in the collective perspective and we need to check all this assessment through the different mechanisms. And listening to Rodrigo and how this ANL is addressing these technological field or aspects, what can we do? Thank you. Good morning. Thank you very much for that question. And a special greetings to all my panel members. It seems that there is also another dog that is getting all this background noise. I think it's important, Diego, to whatever you are, everything that you're saying in the challenge that we have been using for the technological aspect that have been quite useful for this particular purpose, especially in this lockdown period. And I think it's quite aligned to what Felipe is saying. We have uh, opened our eyes and we know that this uh, presence aspect is a complementary mechanism that could be better coordinated with other mechanisms, especially with the participation of all these uh, interest points. Last week, we had our first public hearing, virtual one, and we believe that there was a, with 300 or 400 uh, attendees, and we also had some other viewers through Facebook, YouTube, and other means. So we have 4,000 reproductions of the same information. So we have um, participation mechanisms in a different way. We're also talking about these high precision photography, which allow us to, to know exactly what is going on in that particular territory. It is also well aligned according to what the uh, director of the corporation is saying, because it's all this work that has been articulated and we need to strengthen the different links and bones and bonds. And we are just stating these monitoring networks for making the decisions for the monitoring and evaluation process. And secondly, we also have a better information at the baselines for making the decisions. And for the other companies, we will have a cost reduction process because they are being helped to see what is part of the project. So there are many other things that could be done. Thirdly, by these geographical information systems that we were saying, we are working with with this uh, early alerts system and we're working and, and trying to incorporate the information and it is being said by the director of Corpo Guajiro from the different projects that have been licensed with all of them so they can be added up to everything that we're doing and know exactly what is the impact in the territory, all the synergy projects that we're working on. So we started to build those different alerts or notifications for the measurement and the territory that would allow us to propose everything that we are just discussing for the service corridor and also could be addressed by everything that he, the director of the corporation is saying. Maybe we will have this network and the impacts that we won't be able to mitigate if we do not have a proper exercise for that purpose. So technology is helping us importantly and as of course, the knowledge of the region and the knowledge of the people that has been for many years. It really calls my attention what Michelle is saying, and I think it hasn't changed. The role of the organizations hasn't changed for doing this investment. So today, this is a decisive point. And this is also related with these international institutions, with the international agendas in terms of technology that would allow us to go in the same direction, trying to respect the traditions, nature, and many other aspects. And I believe that there are around 70 organizations in Latin America that are part of these responsible investment uh, responsibilities. So that's what we are calling up to this exercise that has been set and that Diego is asking about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodrigo. We have a very responsible transition. 
makes that this energy transition could obtain the expected result so we don't create new problems by uh, speeding up this transition. This is uh, how the portfolios have been built up and trying to uh, reach the transition to have a good result. We have five minutes for the public Q&A and this is how these possibilities for participating in the different communities for the development of these transmission lines. I would like to know how the Bogota group is working with the YU community so they can be part of the projects and can participate actively on those projects. Thank you, Diego. It's quite essential that with this new condition and we have quite a significant effort to to arrange this process. Here we have the, the participation of the ministry and has been essential. We've been uh, closing some of the agreements and we hope we can close another three. And the main objective for not affecting in time or cost the project is to to go along with the chronogram so we could have the we need to perform the best effort for making um, more efficient work as a commitment with the country in these uh, surveys with the communities is very important as dr fernando has mentioned is how to reach that all these communities we can manage the different com uh, a conflict and not in getting a negative impact in the development of the projects. So we need to to work with the government and the different authorities along with the same community in order to warranty that uh, the different conflicts among communities do not impact the, the development of the project. Another important aspect that is going to be essential is the alignment as a state for the different wave of the community's communication is how to have this process and to map all the different communities that we just need to discuss and to perform the dialogue that we need as investors. And sometimes these certifications for the communities and sometimes is many other communities would like to express themselves and to to broaden up their input. So we need to be to believe one another and to, as it was mentioned before, we can start working jointly for all of this. Uh, for the benefit of the country as well. So all these territories where we can have the structure and we can have a footprint of development and a better conditions for all those communities. Yes, the exercise and the right to have a dialogue in previous consultation and not having a non-orderly uh, participation or involvement of the communities. We need to bring them on board because often we talk about communities and in the Guajira, it is a community that has so much knowledge on life to share. Unfortunately, there are previous processes that have taken place and that have not taken into account those communities. So, According to what you mentioned, well, I think we all agree we have to bring them on board. So maybe for an additional comment, because we are arriving to the end of our panel, for our panel members that have shown that what we are doing during the pandemia time at the Guajira, and this is the efforts that we will have to redouble with the new bids that will be creating new projects and undoubtedly will be a challenges for all the institution uh, departments that you represent. We have to undergo this transition that has already started. Thank you so much and I think that 
this is goodbye. Emerson, I think the mic is yours. Muchas gracias por las perspectivas muy importantes. As, as you can see, I mean, these issues are, um, are paramount to, uh, to developing wind energy in La Guajira, and I would encourage you all to continue the conversation, whether it's by networking or, or offline. An hour is, um, was, it was a very good hour, but it's um, really not, not nearly enough. Um, moving on to the next, and uh, I would finally just like to thank all, all the panelists and, and Diego for your, uh, for your moderation. Thank you so much. Moving along now through the through the program, um, next up will be in the session area. So this is back on the platform along the left hand side of your screen for Nordex Group's technical breakout session. We will see you there shortly. And in the meantime, you're still free to go see the virtual expo area. And um, we would like to first take a quick break for a message from our sponsor, NL Green Power. On that note, we will close this panel and see you in the sessions area. Muchas gracias a todos. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Chao, chao. Muchas gracias.